For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. Theirs will still be hot. My friend, Irma. You know, in this age of advanced science, jet propulsion, and atomic power, great minds are contemplating trips by rocket to the moon. On such a trip, they will first pass through the Earth's atmosphere to the stratosphere, then through the low gravity belt into outer space, which is a complete vacuum. And when they get there, they will find wandering aimlessly around the brain of my friend Irma. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. As far as little Jane Stacy is concerned, I couldn't find a sweeter, more lovable person than Irma Peterson, my roommate. It's just that sometimes she says the queerest things. For instance, I happened to mention that Dean Atchison was made head of our State Department, and Irma was quite upset. So I said, Irma... Yes, Jane? Do you object to Atchison taking the job? No, but it's not fair to their other partners to peek in Santa Fe. <laughs> See what I mean? Uh, right now, I have another problem. This has been going on for weeks. Irma. Yes, Jane? For the last time, I insist you say yes. Oh, but I can't say yes. But, honey, you're overdoing it, and the time has come to... Oh, but, Jane, I feel so sentimental about those things. I, I cannot help it. I... Enough is enough. Now, before I become a raving maniac, I warn you to say yes. All right, Jane, you can throw out the Christmas tree. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Santa Claus. I, I don't know what is with you that you refuse to stop celebrating holidays. But I like holidays. Well, I know, but there's a limit to how long you can celebrate each one. All right, I'll put the decorations away. Jane. What, honey? You know, we're awfully lucky. Well, what do you mean, sweetie? Oh, I don't know. It's just that we have such a nice, warm apartment. It's so cozy and so comforting to stand here by the window and see how the other half lives. Honey, you're looking at the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just still a nice feeling. You know, Jane, it's better to be up here looking down than to be down there looking up. <laughs> Well, you'll get no argument from me. Oh, we're both so fortunate to have such a cheerful place to live in. Oh, the draperies, the bric-a-brac, and, and that picture of Al. Even he is smiling contentedly. That's only because he's facing the icebox. <laughs> but you know, honey, I, I agree with you. In cold weather like this, there's no place like home. How cold is it right now, Jane? Well, the paper says it'll be about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. No, Jane, I mean, how cold is it in this country? <laughs> no, Irma, no Fahrenheit is a method of measuring temperature Then, of course, there's centigrade Centigrade? Oh, those are those little bugs with all the legs <laughs> Yes, and a centipede is a three-wheeled bicycle <laughs> Honey, I don't see how you... Come in It's only me, Professor Kropotkin <laughs> Oh, girls, girls, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't take it any longer. Well, what's wrong? It's that room of mine. When I sit in it, I feel like an anemic Eskimo who has lost his shirt in a poker game. <laughs> Professor, it must be terrible up there in this weather. Why don't you try burning the stove? Oh, I did. I burned the stove. I burned the table. I burned the bathtub. <laughs> I burned everything that would burn. And now I don't know what to do. You see, girls, when a man is young, he has a fire within him. And he keeps going on all cylinders. But I'm an old man. And not only is my battery dead, but I've developed a knock in my motor. <laughs> oh, Professor, don't let yourself get so depressed that there must be something you can do. Oh, yes, I have plans. 
First of all, I want to kill Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> That's silly. You'd get the electric chair. Exactly. And when they throw the switch, at least for a few seconds before I die, I'll be warm. <laughs> now, please, stop the nonsense. I I'm sure there's something we can do. No, my little darlings, you've tried enough. There's only one thing left for me to do. I'm going to the old man's home. Oh, Professor, you can't go there. I got to go there. They'll never take me in the old lady's home. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Professor. I'm going to call Mrs. O'Reilly. It wouldn't do any good. I've called her everything. <laughs> oh, Mrs. O'Reilly. Yes, Janie. Will you please come up here? All right. Wait until I put a chalk mark on this step. I hate to sweep the same step twice. <laughs> All right. You shouldn't have called her, Janie. She may be the last person I see before I go to the old man's home, and I would like to remember women as something human. <laughs> Here she is. Here I am, girls. Oh, hello, Professor. Mrs. O'Reilly, it's bad enough. You have to make me miserable by renting me a deep freeze for a room. <laughs> but that doesn't give you the right to have the power of life and death. What are you talking about? For weeks now, I have tried to do away with myself. I tried gas, but the stove don't work. <laughs> I tried to drown myself, but the bathtub leaks. <laughs> And hanging us out of the question, the ceiling wouldn't stand the extra weight. <laughs> Professor, you've got no right blaming me for everything. I do all I can about your room. But after all, I'm only the landlady. The bank owns the property. And every time I ask them for money to make improvements, well, they turn me down. They probably think it's your face you want to improve, and that much money they ain't got. <laughs> Professor, I'm sure Mrs. O'Reilly is doing everything she can. Hey, I've got an idea. If you can hold out a little longer, Professor, I'll go and speak to Richard, and I'm sure with his influence, the people at the bank will listen to him. Well, thank you, Janie, my darling. But hurry, because I'm a desperate man, and the thought of spending another sleepless night on that ice floe, I just can't stand those nightmares anymore. Well, Professor... <laughs> If you'll say the word, you know, two can live cheaply as one. And my apartment could be our apartment. <laughs> Mrs. O'Reilly, changing nightmares does not settle my problem. <laughs> Jamie, please try to get Richard to help me. Otherwise, today I got to go to the old man's home. Meanwhile, I'll be upstairs waiting, girls. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, the old men's home. Oh, girls. Did he mean that? If we can't help him. Oh, no. We can't let that happen. He's really such a fine man. Oh, I'd miss him so. Then why don't you go with him? <laughs> to the old men's home? Irma, please be sensible. Mrs. O'Reilly, you run along. We'll see what we can do. Janie, darling, do everything you can. You don't know what it means to an old lady to have the companionship of a man. When I walk past the other old maids, I feel so sporty. <laughs> please try. That I will, rest assured. Oh, thank you, girls. Goodbye. Oh, gosh, Janie. I feel so sorry for the professor. Well, I won't waste any time, Irma. I'm going to call Richard right now. Well, wait a minute, Jane. I don't see why you have to call Richard. What do you mean? I think we should get Al's advice. Oh, what could Al do? Richard has influence. Well, he's all right for stocks and bonds and high finance, but the professor's problem is different. He's miserable and disgusted. Well, what about it? Well, when it comes to being miserable and disgusting, no one can beat Al. I mean, uh, I know what you mean, Irma, and that's why I'm going to let Richard handle this. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hi, you chicken. Hello, Al, honey. Chicken, you can start packing. Packing? What for? You and I are going to be married, and then we're going on a cruise around the world on our honeymoon. Oh, Jane, did you hear that? Oh, isn't it wonderful? Wonderful? It's incredible. When do you start, Al? Just as soon as my latest deal comes through. <laughs> 
another deal. What is it this time? Putting sawdust in little boxes and selling it for grated cheese? No, this is natural. It's a St. Bernard who carries a jug of Alka-Seltzer for men who have already been found by the other St. Bernard. <laughs> And with that butte, I am going to get lost, too. Irma, I'm going to meet Richard at Sands. I'll see you later. Chicken, what is she up to? Well, Professor Kropotkin can't stand his room any longer, and Jane is getting Richard to see what he can do about it. Richard, Richard, why does it have to be Richard? What's the matter with me? I got connections. That's what I told Jane. Yeah, why, this is such a simple matter. We call up the fire department. Tell them the professor's room is a trap. Then they will force the bank to make the necessary repairs. Get on the phone, chicken. I'll tell you what to say. All right, Al. Well, gee, uh, what'll I tell him? Just say, uh, send a fireman to the professor's room as it is a fire trap, and unless something is done, you won't be responsible. You got it? I think so. Hello? If you send a fireman to trap me in the professor's room, I won't be responsible until something's done. <laughs> Hold it, chicken. I'll take it. Hello, fire inspector? We wish to report that one of the rooms at 8224 West 73rd Street is a fire trap. And I think you should put pressure on the bank to make the necessary repairs. Yeah, just ask for Professor Kropotkin's room. It's the only one on the top floor. Goodbye. Well, chicken, it's all set. Now we just call up Jane and Richard at Sam's and tell them it's all fixed. Oh, Al, I'm so proud of you. People think you're nothing, but they'd change their tune if they knew the real nothing like I do. <laughs> Well, Al, I did as you said. Richard is doing nothing about the professor. You don't have to, Jane. It's all set. Oh, wonderful. What did you do? It don't matter. It's the results that count. When I put my shoulder to the wheels, they move with the speed of a flying fortress. It's only me again, Kropotkin. Hiya, Professor. Did the inspector come? Yeah, he came. Well, are they going to get the bank to make repairs? No, they say it's beyond repair. They condemned the room. Now I got no place to live. <laughs> Don't think that you are safe from film. Run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you'll feel a slippery coating, you have film, and you need Pepsodent with Irium to remove it. For film is worse than you think. Film collects stains that make your teeth look dull. But remember, Pepsodent toothpaste removes film, makes your teeth look bright. Film harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. True, but Pepsodent removes film makes your breath fresh and clean. Film glues acid to your teeth, the very acid many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. That's right, but Pepsodent toothpaste removes film and the acids it contains. Film never lets up. It forms continually on your teeth. Yes, you have to fight film every day. So brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent toothpaste because no other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. So start now to fight film with Pepsodent, the toothpaste with an exclusive formula for removing film. Well, Al and Irma have really taken care of the professor's problem. And now his room is no longer a problem to him. Why? Because he no longer has a room. <laughs> and the poor professor is sitting here, the most pathetic picture you ever saw. <laughs> I don't know whether he can't speak out of grief or whether it's because Irma just made a biscuit for him and he can't get his teeth apart. <laughs> Irma, what are you doing now? Well, the professor may still be hungry. I, I think I'll make him a Spanish omelet. No, Irma, please, not that. Well, uh, uh, I made a spa Spanish omelet for you last week. Yes, I know. And when I went to sleep, I felt that Carmen was dancing on my stomach with spiked shoes. <laughs> Oh, now, look, Professor, you don't have to be bitter just because things didn't work out. 
Al, I'm not bitter at you and Irma. Your hearts meant well. It's just that your heads got in the way. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me. I'm... Uh, come in. Oh, Professor, I've been looking for you. Now you look for me. All these months when I wanted something done to my room, I couldn't find you. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. And if you like, you can stay in my apartment for several days while I move in with my cousin. Oh, no, I couldn't permit that. Why not? I got nothing against your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, I'm too old to keep moving around. Oh, now, Professor, don't be giving yourself a complex. You're not so old. Look at me. I feel just like a girl. <laughs> and when I walk down the street, I still have a spring in my step. <laughs> And I have walked behind you, and believe me, those springs need oily. <laughs> no, 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 my, my mind is made up. I'm going over to the old man's home and see if they'll take you. You'll do nothing of the sort. I'm going right out and meet Richard and tell him your problem. And Al and Irma, if you get any more brainstorms, crawl under the bed until it blows over. Now, remember... There, Professor, we still have hope. Why don't you come downstairs with me and I'll give you a nice cup of hot tea? Well, that's a good idea. I ate one of Irma's biscuits an hour ago, and if there's anything that will dissolve a rock, it's your tea. Let's go. <laughs> that Jane. Just because we bollocks things up once does not mean cannot be resurrected. But, Al, she told us to stay out. Yeah, so she'll always be able to ridicule us. Well, when things start to go wrong, I like to go through with it. And this calls for a consultation with a great mind. And there's only one man to call. Who else? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, got a problem. The professor's room has been condemned. Who do you know high up in the fire department? What? Oh, you know them all, huh? You met them through your mother. Oh, your mother is false alarm fanny. <laughs> no, no, Joe. That kind of a recommendation is liable to be injurious to our cause. Want to get a condemnation notice revoked. What's my move? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Sounds good, Joe. Thanks a million and goodbye, noble friend. Well, chicken, it's in the bag. We're off to see Mr. Wilkinson, the city building inspector. And when he hears my story, he's got to overrule that condemned order. Let's go, chicken. <laughs> Well, as a city building inspector, naturally I could revoke the order. But I understand the professor's room is a shambles. Exactly. The professor paid a fortune to have it decorated that way. Decorated? I don't understand. Well, clarify matters. You see, Inspector, Professor Kropotkin happens to be a great author. Indeed. Oh, sure. Are you familiar with the book Tobacco Road? Oh, yes. Well, the professor's writing a sequel to it. I think he's calling it, uh, uh, Nicotine Lane. <laughs> Naturally, when he writes, he likes the proper atmosphere Really? Sure, all them great authors need the proper surroundings to write a great book Take the dame who wrote Gone with the Wind Understand she spent six months in front of an electric fan uh -huh. And I understand stand the woman who wrote The Snake Pit spent three weeks in the zoo No, no, chicken, The Snake Pit is about the insane well, anyone who would spend that much time in the zoo couldn't be in their right mind. Well, that's another story. Inspector, take my word for it, the professor's a great author and had his room especially decorated the way it is. Why, I understand he spent $30 for termites alone. But that's because he's a real genius and will not settle for any substitutes. Well, geniuses and books are a little out of my line, but I can see where a man like that would like atmosphere. All right, I'll put a cancel order through. Thank you, Inspector Wilkinson. And who knows? Someday the professor may dedicate a book to you. Good day. Jane. Hello, sweetie. Al, should we tell her the good news? Go on, chicken. Well, wait, I have good news for you. I saw Richard, and he's going to use his influence to see that the professor is taken care of. Ha, <laughs> ha. Ha, ha! Ha, ha! What are you two braying about? 
Shall I tell a chicken? Go ahead, Al. Oh, and Jane, you better put a tight scarf around your neck because when you hear what we did, you're going to laugh your head off. <laughs> well, of all the... Come in. Hello, Janie. Oh, there you are, Irma and Al. I could kiss you both. Uh, thanks, Professor. We'll just shake hands. <laughs> Jamie, have they told you what they did? No, but I've just had an aspirin, so go ahead. But I don't know how they did it or what they told the building inspector, but their order condemning my room has been revoked and now I got my room back. <laughs> See, Jane, your Richard isn't the only one who can get things done. My Al isn't half the dummy you think he is. He's 100%. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Chicken. Tell me, Al, how did you do it? Very simple. Told him you was an author and you had the room made that way because you wanted it as a background for your writing. <laughs> how do you like that? Me, an author, I can hardly write English. <laughs> well, I suppose it's all right as long as it did the trick, but it was unnecessary because Richard fixed everything up. Always like to depend on myself. Then no, nothing can go wrong. Uh, come in. How do you do? The landlady told me I might find Professor Kropotkin here. I'm Professor Kropotkin. What can I do for you, please? Professor Kropotkin. Oh, at last, face to face with a famous author. Well, that all depends. Whose face am I facing? <laughs> well, I'm chairman of the Ladies' Fiction Club, and I've taken the liberty of promising our ladies that you'd speak before them this afternoon. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Is something wrong? I, I just remembered I have a terrible case of laryngitis. I couldn't speak a word. <laughs> but I just heard you. Uh, well, you see, I... I, I uh, that wasn't uh, the professor, lady. Uh, I've been doing the talking. You see, I'm a ventriloquist. Yes, you, you know one of those men that use a dummy. We're engaged. <laughs> oh, I know you're all trying to humor me out of making the professor address our club. But I thought he'd be glad to do it from the way my husband talked. Your husband? Yes. Inspector Wilkinson of the city building department. Aye, 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 aye. Yes, uh, I'm Mrs. Wilkinson, and our literary club meets at four. Of course, I can't force you to lecture to us, Professor. <laughs> I'll just tell Mr. Wilkinson you don't think it worthwhile. Do whatever makes you happy. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> so, Al, you fixed things up again. Professor, what are you doing near that window? I'm gonna jump out. The lady told me to do anything that's making me happy. <laughs> oh, and after Richard had it all fixed up. Now his influence won't help if they find out that Al and Irma lied. Why did the two of you have to butt in? Well, it looked like one of those occasions where I could outwit the man. But, Al, you've no business going into battle only half-equipped. <laughs> now what are we going to do? I don't know. It's a cold day, and tonight it will be worse. Why did you have to say I was a writer? You could have said I was an explorer. Then I could have shown them some of the stuffed animals I trapped in my room. <laughs> what to suggest. If she tells her husband you refuse to speak, he'll reissue the condemned order and then, well, you know. Yes, it'll be the old man's home for me. Well, I got only one alternative. I'll go down and lecture to the ladies. But, well, what will you talk about? Who knows? But there will be a lot of heart in my speech because when I'm up there, it's going to be in my mouth. <laughs> here waiting for the professor to come back from his lecture. Why are we all here? Because I refuse to let Irma and Al leave. They got the professor into this thing, and when the roof falls in on him, I think they should have the honor of carrying him out. Oh, gosh, Jane, everything's going to be all right. I don't see why you're so fidgety. No? Well, what about yourself? I'm not nervous. Well, then, for heaven's sake, take those bobby pins off your ears and put them back in your hair. Come in. Hello, everybody. Look at me, Kropotkin, the author. You, you, you mean you convinced them? Of course. Well, how'd you do it? Very simple. I'm a very simple. They asked me to describe my new book, and I told them it was about a little town that had been completely wrecked by a terrible tornado. And when I described in horrible details 
They say they'd never heard a better lecture. They cry, they weep, they sob. Why, that's wonderful. But, Professor, I didn't know you had ever been in a tornado. I didn't have to be in a tornado. I just described my room. <laughs> Don't think that you are safe from film. Nearly everyone has it. Just run your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, that's film. And you'd better get Pepsodent toothpaste to remove it. For film collects stains that make teeth look dull. It harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid that many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. And remember, film never lets up. So brush your teeth twice a day with film-removing Pepsodent. No other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. Get Pepsodent with Irium today. in his room, and you know, we all feel a little wonderful about it. Mrs. O'Reilly celebrated by going out and getting the new short bob, and the professor wanted to know if she had looked into the electric fan. So, all is well with the world again. Al and Irma are on the sofa. He has given her a lifesaver, and she is trying to slip it onto her finger. That's as close as she'll ever come to getting an engagement ring. Irma, I am going to bed. Oh, but Jane, you haven't seen my new veil yet. Veil? Yes, I'm going to wear it into the office because my boss says the less he sees of me, the better he likes it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if I live to be a million, I'll never see anyone like my friend Irma. <laughs> is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Park Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it's brought to you by Pepsi and Toothpaste with Irium, another fine product of Lieber Brothers Company. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma, with Joan Banks as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried was heard as Professor Kropotkin, and Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Lud Bluskin. <laughs> Your contribution to CARE will guarantee delivery of much-needed food and clothing to those who are suffering in Europe this winter. In many countries, malnutrition and disease are still widespread, and many millions of people are living today on inadequate diet. Mail your contribution to CARE, C-A-R-E, New York City. In Canada, the address is 193 Spark Street, Ottawa. This is Wendell Nile speaking. B-R-I-S-K, brisk flavor. That's what you get in Lipton tea. Yes, brisk flavor that picks you up, brings you back alive in a hurry. Brisk flavor that comes from Lipton's very special blending of the finest orange pico and pico teas. Try it. You'll find that this brisk flavor of Lipton's leaves you refreshed and ready to go again. And you can enjoy it often. Because even wonderful tea like Lipton's costs less than any drink except water. Always ask for Lipton tea, the brisk tea with that heartwarming Lipton lift. Tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>